from NBC News, three black passengers suing American Airlines for racial discrimination. Three black men have filed a federal lawsuit against American Airlines, claiming that they were racially discriminated against when they were allegedly pulled off a plane over a body odor complaint. And this is probably not a scam or a hoax or a money grab. These people just want to get to the bottom of all those stone cold racists working at American Airlines. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. It would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing. If you want to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link, of course, will be in the description. Suing American Airlines today, alleging they were victims of racial discrimination. I want to show you some video of what happened here. A group of men rounded up. And, and we haven't, I mean, I, I this, I'm, I'm almost certain this is not just a weirdo money grab hoax scam, right? We haven't seen anything like this. We haven't seen any GoFundMes raise, raise money for dog walkers who got a racist doll. We haven't seen a mayor of a small town in Texas or a small town in Texas claiming that it was racism and he needed to drop out of the race. And then, of course, he lost to a black woman. We haven't seen any of that. So this is probably all on the level. Up on the jet bridge after being temporarily removed from that American flight from Phoenix to New York. According to the suit, they say airline employees. I mean, you probably would have been better off just stay in Phoenix, bro. You don't even have to go to New York. It's absolute garbage. But I, I don't know, they're probably going there to steal. Employees suggested that a complaint about body odor is what prompted their removal. The men say that was not true. They sat down with some of them, sat down with CBS earlier today. <laughs> hey, body odor. Um, sure, maybe. I don't know if that's enough to get you kicked off a plane. It's probably pretty obnoxious. But I could also venture a guess that they just smelled like weed and everybody didn't want to smell that on the plane, even though it's legal in Arizona. I don't know. Who knows what the hell is going on? But it seems to me that these guys just obviously, they want a payday. As I got my things and walked to the front of the plane. Bro, I'm sorry. This is like real boondocks level stuff. And what did he say specifically to you? He said, sit down, nigga. Riley Freeman is a third grade student at J. Edgar Hoover Elementary School. He's a basketball player, an avid reader, and one day hopes to spread his philosophy through rap music. He was in class when he had a verbal exchange with his teacher, Joe Petto. But Mr. Petto said it was Riley who used the N-word first. So I told him to take his seat, and here comes this barrage of insults. I mean... Some of the words I've never even heard before, and I was just stunned. And I said, well, sit down, nigga. I just repeated the insult back to him because that's what I've been trained to do. That is not what he's been trained to do. School superintendent Donald Richards says all teachers are taught to use appropriate hyphenated euphemisms instead of racial slurs. Right. You think that's what this guy usually looks like and dresses like and walks around in Phoenix and talks like, no, bro, this is like, I, no, I, the teacher called me the N-word. It's completely ridiculous. It's the same thing we see it in the, the photos, the print paper, like a, a Stone Cold thug selling cigarettes outside the convenience store, and then they put his graduation photo up or whatever. I made a left to the jet bridge. I noticed that there was seven other black men, and that kind of was like, okay, what's happening here? I want to bring in Emily Aketa now, who's got more on this. Okay, so what was happening here? What are the allegations? It still says, I've got the lawsuit here with me. It's certainly not mincing words here, accusing American Airlines of uh, blatant and egregious, egregious race discrimination. And of the eight men who were all black, who apparently were forced off of the plane, three of them are now suing, and you're seeing them on your screen, Alvin Jackson, Emmanuel Jean Joseph, and Xavier Reveal. By the way, they did not know each other before this January incident. They weren't sitting near each other, and they didn't even learn about why they were being asked to get out of their seat until after the fact they learned that there was a complaint over body odor and i think we had gotten our hands on some of the cell phone videos of the incident and you really their their sense of disbelief and confusion and frustration is really quite palpable you can hear comments like we're the only ones getting taken off the plane look at us i or i paid for the flight just like everybody else here's more from their wait, interview but, with cp wait, wait, wait. but he was also just talking to another black guy right that, that's the thing it's like they could just ignore the other black people in this situation 
and claiming traces off of the plane and they were and again the, the complaint america allegedly was was body odor that's why uh, body odor and they said that that's not, that was yeah. not not a thing so, well then they were let back on the plane and they ended up taking the same flight back to jfk and it was just an hour delay so what is american airlines saying about all this yeah so one thing i will point out is that there are a number of airlines that have policies around body odors looking on american airlines website for instance that says to ensure a safe environment for everyone you must be respectful that your odor isn't offensive but again the lawsuit alleges they didn't have body odor and they also pointed out that this appeared to be all black male passengers. All of the black male passengers on the plane had been asked to get off the plane. American Airlines sharing this statement with us. We take all claims of discrimination very seriously, going on to say our teams are currently investigating the matter as the claims do not reflect our core values. The lawsuit also goes on to say that they do not believe this is an isolated incident. They point out in 2017 when the NW. Oh, it's not an isolated incident. When you hear stories, uh, news stories out of California about a uh, random junkie smashing a window at an ice cream shop or a high school graduation getting shot up. Those are isolated incidents, but this is not an isolated incident. So they're probably discriminating against smelly black guys all the time. LACP issued a travel advisory against American Airlines warning black passengers of a recent string of what they said possible uh, racial bias incidents. That travel advisory had been lifted uh, some eight or nine months later, and the airline had invited the NAACP to tour their headquarters. So. Wow. Emily Akata, thank you for standing. Yeah, uh, this is pretty crazy. I don't know what the hell is going on. I did think they knew each other. Apparently they didn't. So that makes it a little bit more confusing. But you've cried wolf too many times. I'm just not prone to believing any of this is all about race. There was probably something else going on. I mean, do we think that American Airlines, one of the premier, one of the most popular airlines in the country, is just going out? Because they, they also say this is not an isolated incident. So do you think day after day, these people in the climate that we are currently in 2024, that they are currently out there discriminating all the time because they hate black people and they don't think they're going to have to deal with that. You think they welcomed this lawsuit or I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened, but I am at the point where you've, you've played this car too many times and our patience has, our patience has left the building. So maybe you were right. Probably not, but it doesn't matter. We don't believe you. You need more people. We don't believe you. You need more people. And do you think we're going to see uh, a follow up on this? Do you think the facts are going to come out? Do you think they're going to be judged fairly? Do you, th do you think the truth will prevail? Or is it more likely that we're just going to be under more mob rule?